Welcome. Today is Wednesday. It is June 22nd, 2022. My name is Jeremy, and this is my first cup. Good morning, Stacy and Mark and Brian and Gad and all the rest of you, whether you're watching live later or listening. Thanks for coming by. Good morning, Jenny. Speaking of listening, i um, been getting some feedback on... The show being very quiet, people having a hard time hearing me. I've got a different microphone on here today, so I'm curious. Does it is it, is it better? Is it better? Or am I gonna have to find a different one? Let me know. Good morning, Willard. Good morning, Stacy. All right, so uh, we're on like day 146 of the bird. No, eight. Uh, woke up this morning to the bird went out. I have a number of animal repellents. I put several, I put one of them down, one that's worked well on things. And I sprayed insecticidal soap on the window. So now my windows are all gross looking. Neither deter the bird. <laughs> all right, Kelly says, yes, it's better. Good, good morning, Nathan. Good morning, Frank. Oh, look at everybody, good morning, Andy. So, those two things aren't going to work. Um, but yeah, I don't know. We'll try, we'll try something. A bunch of you sent me some information, some suggestions. I will try to make a concerted effort to prioritize that today. Though I have to say, waking up at 5 a.m. isn't a terrible thing. It would be nicer if I sat and drank coffee during it, but it's called first cup, not second pot, which is what would happen. All right, Mark says, you are much louder today. It's great. Awesome. Good morning, John. Brian says, seems a bit louder from my phone. Yes, I'm getting that new-to-me Volkswagen today. As long as UPS delivers the check from the lender, so I'll be able to test audio fully tomorrow morning. That's great. Um, this is a replacement microphone for the microphone I broke the last time Andrew and I recorded. Uh, it's a USB conference mic, so it just kind of sits here on the table. The downside is I'm at a USB port, so I'm going to have to get another USB hub. But that's okay, because those aren't expensive. I can handle that. Good morning, Daniel. Ooh, Daniel's on the show this morning. That's a name I haven't seen pop up here in a while. Glad to see you, man. So how about this? Here's something we haven't done in a while. In the last week, tell me something that you've done in your training that made you smile anything in your martial arts training it could be because you learned something new it could be because you got better at something oh pardon it could be because somebody around you did something silly whatever it is there are moments where i realize you know we, we talk about martial arts but we don't talk about martial arts exclusively and i'm good with that but there are times where i want to make sure that we we stick to our roots so I'm hoping you'll share that with me. Something in the last week. If you got to go beyond a week, that's okay. But something that made you smile. Oh, no. Daniel was off work with a twisted ankle. So he can join today. It's a bummer. I hope you heal quickly. So yesterday, Tuesday, what did I do? Did a couple things. Oh. Got the Jeep key made, so now I have two keys for that vehicle. Uh, picked up something that a friend had borrowed. I went for a drive. This drive was very specific. I've talked on this show before that I'm feeling like it's time to open a martial arts school. And I've struggled to find a location. And I said, you know what? Instead of looking at Google Maps, I just need to drive around 
this area. There's a, there's a specific area I've identified that I want to be. And drive slowly and just look around and see what options I come up with. And I came up with three. Uh, one is talking to someone, one is a dance studio, and one is a retail space. I'm going to guess the retail space is going to be more expensive than I'm willing to plunk down at this time. But I'm still going to find out because maybe. Because it's the type of retail space that it's a, it's in a perfect location. It would work really well. So. Jenny says, I smiled when I was training with Lilith. She's very good with the staff. Gad says, just walking into a school after so many years brought a big smile to my face. That's awesome. Kelly said, it's invite your, er, er, quotes, dad to class week. Lots of smiles and laughing this week. It's all sound great. Mm. You know, I, I have these thoughts floating in around in my mind about opening a school. It's a big commitment. It's a big deal. It's something that really, so many of you may not know, I had a school right out of college. I opened the school. I taught for two years. I loved it. But at the same time, I was building my IT company and I was just, I was so spent by the time classes rolled around that. I shut down the school and not with a lot of notice. I think I gave everybody, I said, you know, next class is our last class. Because I was afraid that if I gave it much more time, I would chicken out. And that whole experience really has, um, I've carried that with me. I'm not thrilled about the way I handled it. I was 22. And I don't want to do things the same. I don't want to make the same mistakes. I, there were things that happened in running the school that I don't want to do again. But I want to teach. In fact, when I was in Maine this past weekend, um, one of my favorite martial artists, someone that I, part of the reason I went to college where I went to college was so I could train with him. I got to train with him for a couple of years once I got a car, asked me, you have a school yet? And that kind of little fire under me. So... Maybe we go for the retail space. Maybe we jump in. Maybe I see if I can get this thing going well enough and quickly enough that I stop doing some of the things I do on the consulting side. Who knows? Frank says, yesterday I had a great talk with my friend Jeremy. We had some good laughs. We sure did. I always enjoy my calls with Frank. Get yourself friends who can be silly and serious and challenge you in the right way. I'm lucky I have a number of people like that. Daniel says, have you considered opening a dojo in a retail space in a rundown shopping mall in Reseda? Uh, I, I have. Uh, the commute would be the killer. Now, this is a, um, so Vermont is interesting for those of you who don't live in Vermont, which um, a good chunk of you live in Vermont. Vermont is interesting because we have such a small population, 630,000 people in the whole state, which means when we talk about certain areas, like areas that we think of as affluent, they might have five or 6,000 people. And one of the, and the place that has the retail space, in fact, two of the three contacts that I need to make are in this town called Waitsfield, which uh, has a couple ski mountains right nearby. And, and there's, it's, uh, um, there's a little bit more money there than some of the other towns. Ski towns tend to have a little bit more money because property values get pushed up. And if you don't have the money, you can't live there. So that seems like a good thing. And I just wonder what would life look like if I opened a, opened a school? There are probably a bunch of people who would take kickboxing classes. 
we could probably run some daytime classes. I might be able to zero to 60 this pretty quickly. Who knows? And this is why I, I said this. Daniel says 630,000 people is smaller than the city I live in. Uh, absolutely. We are a tiny state. We are the second smallest state. Andy says, just do it. Well, we will see. There are a lot of things to consider. Um, I kind of wish it was bigger because then I could move all the whistle kick stuff there. If it was big enough that I could have a space for recording and a warehouse, that would be ideal. The space is not big enough for that. I might be able to do the recording there. I don't know. See, if the stuff, if there, I have this dream. I've shared this before. I don't know about on First Cup where we have a huge facility with multiple training spaces and offices and a retail store. Um, it actually reminds me of a, what's in my head reminds me of a similar space to what I saw at Reebok headquarters in Boston when I was there in 2013, 14, for, um, oh, I guess that's where I did my level one training. Yeah. This idea of trying to bring everything together, I don't have the money to bring everything together. I don't have the money for a big, for a big space. You know, this is, it's probably, what's in my head is probably a million dollar project. Doesn't exist right now. Not going to happen. So I got to think about all these things that I do for money and how this would impact them. So we'll figure it out. Figure it out. Just, it's all just time. Last call for what you have done in the last week, martial arts wise, to put a smile on your face. I was practicing kicks in my narrow hallway last night. It's always interesting to practice any kind of rotational movement when you're confined on the sides. Next time you're in a public restroom and you're using a stall, ideally if nobody's in there, or maybe you don't care, practice some techniques with the door shut. See how that claustrophobia impacts what you do and how you do it. I think it's fascinating. The, the presence of a wall, even if we're not going to hit it, just that proximity seems to mess with people's heads, mine included. Stacy says she met with some great folks last night. Sure did. We had a meeting for one of our committees, launching one of our products, projects. Um, here's a hint. There was information about it at Marshall Journal that was posted recently. And we're going to go public with everything. It looks like, I think we kicked around July 14th last night. I think that's the day. So knock on wood. We're going to throw another thing at the industry and upset the apple cart. Because we're good at that. Excuse me. I'll share something with you. Um, I have to be very vague about this. Um, Andrew booked a guest. And when I saw this person on the calendar, I said, no, I said, we need to walk that back. And I can't explain why other than this person is not someone I want to have on the show. And we talked about it and he understood and he reached out to the person. And I smiled when he sent me the screenshot of their response because it made it easier. They were, they were rude in their response. So there you go. Jenny says, reminds me of some of the great fights in the Daredevil TV show, fights in the tight hallways and stairwells. When we talk about training, we're generally training in these big open spaces. We give ourselves plenty of room to throw our techniques. And yet so much of the real world application 
occurs in these confined spaces. It's something that needs to be considered. And he says, I'm over six foot. A fellow student asked me, how is the weather up there? That's something no one's ever asked me. All right, switching gears into what Frank has sent us. Thank you, as always, to Frank and to Josh Blum for our theme song. Daniel says, so, someone who isn't welcome on the show must be a real erm. Insert expletive here. Um... I wouldn't, I wouldn't have described them with expletives until their response when we uninvited them. Um, but think about it this way. What, is, what, is, what does that say? It says we hurt their feelings. I feel bad. But we've got to take care of ourselves in the show and not subject ourselves in the show to that which we do not want to subject. Today would have been Teriyuki Okazaki's 91st birthday. Master Teriyuki Okazaki was born June 22nd, 1931 in Fukuoka, Japan. After studying Aikido, Judo, and Kendo, he began karate training in 1947. Master Okazaki joined the Japan Karate Association, the JKA, where he studied under both Gichin Funakoshi and Masatoshi Nakayama. I have mild in. Uh, if you're watching, you can see they're using the terms master there. I, I, I don't know that those men would have accepted using those titles there. So uh, I, I, I think I have an issue with that. Um, certainly not an issue with Frank Copy. In 1953, Master Okazaki graduated from Takashoku University in Tokyo with a BA in political economics. In 55, he helped Nakayama develop the JKA instructor's course. Later, as a pioneer instructor, he became the first coach of the course. He later taught at Boe University, considered Japan's West Point, Takushoku University, and Tokyo Turitsu University. He also instructed the instructor trainees in the JKA headquarters. Okazaki was sent to the United States by JKA chief instructor Masatoshi Nakayama in 61 to help share Shotokan karate with people throughout the world. He established a dojo in Philadelphia, now headquarters for the International Shotokan Karate Federation, and formed the East Coast Shotokan Karate Association in 1963. In 1977, he founded the International Shotokan Karate Federation, which is now one of the largest karate organizations in the world. The ISKF, of which Ms. Master Okazaki remains chairman and chief instructor, I didn't need to pour more coffee in there, has approximately 50,000 members in over 30 countries. Okazaki received the rank of 10th Don in October 2007. He has been a faculty member of Philadelphia's Temple University since 1970 and is also an instructor at the University of Pennsylvania, Drexel University, Westchester University, and Thomas Jefferson University. In June of 2007, the ISKF became independent of the JKA, or WF, allowing the ISKF to spread to more countries outside of the Pan America region. Okazaki conducts seminars and clinics, provides training sessions, and administers ranking examinations all across the U.S. as well as internationally. He's the author of two books, The Textbook of Modern Karate, and the perfection of character, guiding principles for the martial arts and everyday life. Okazaki was chosen as Black Belt Magazine's Man of the Year and belongs to their Hall of Fame. So apparently he has passed away, but I kind of like that we read that in present tense. Um, I'm sure he's not instruct instructing at Drexel University anymore, but... I would imagine that his presence is still felt there. You know, this is one of the things I like about traditional martial arts is that quite often we will put flags or photos or other um, references to those who came before at the front of our schools. The way the bowing was explained to me in my original karate school was, you know, we're, we're paying homage to those who came before, especially those who are no longer with us, because what we train is dependent on what they did in the past. I like that. 
Ah, Frank says, unfortunately, he passed of Ramona Cyrus in 2020. Yeah, that's a bummer. But 91, it's a long life. That's a, that's a lot of martial arts in that time. I don't know if I'm the only one. I love watching people in their 80s and 90s train. Because they have to be really intentional about it. They have to be very thoughtful about what they do and how they do. And assuming that they've been training for decades, whew, I think it gives some insight into what matters. I think that's important. He was 88 when he died. Yeah. It's an old person. That's great. Well, there we are. I hope you have a great day. If you haven't checked out Monday's episode of Martial Arts Radio, please do, because we've got another one coming at you tomorrow. Um, what else can I share with you? What else? Anything else new? Uh, we sent out a newsletter last week announcing some stuff, some products, uh, another sign up for all in weekend. We've got three free training days coming and there are, you know, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to remind all of you free training day Northeast. It looks like we are adding two brand new things that we have not done before as part of that weekend. Free training day will remain free training day, but if you have the opportunity to be there for the weekend, Grab the hotel discount code on the Facebook event. If you don't do Facebook, email me and I'll send you the code. Um, it's going to be a big deal. It's going to be some great stuff. You know, we are constantly trying to push limits and make things a little bigger, a little better. And that's exciting to me. So I hope you all appreciate that. Cat says, have a great day and don't let that beaked bandit ruffle your feathers. I was researching um, basically airsoft guns yesterday as a potential deterrent that would require sitting outside. And I don't think I'd be able to shoot well through the grape, the grape leaves. Yeah. It's a whole, this is a whole cluster. All right. If you want to support us in the work that we do to connect, educate, and entertain the traditional martial artists of the world, you have several things that you can do. You can visit our store at whistlekick.com and use the code firstcup 15 to save 15% on anything from a shirt or a tee or sparring gear. If you want gear, act fast because it is going. We're selling stuff like every day. Uh, you can also join our Patreon, patreon.com slash whistlekick. I posted a Patreon update yesterday. Include a little bit of behind the scenes stuff as well as upcoming podcast episodes. You can get in there for as little as two bucks a month. But if you want the full list, if you are truly family, you can check out the family page. It's free, whistlekick.com slash family. It's got all the things you can do to help us in our mission, as well as all the ways that you may choose to benefit from the things that we do. So check out that page. You're going to have to type it in. It is not linked. If you have questions or comments or feedback or anything like that, best place to leave it, assuming it's not terrible feedback, facebook.com slash first cup of Jeremy. If you kind of want to tear me a new one, if there's something you're unhappy about, or if you just want to you know, talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, Email me, jeremy at whistlekick.com. First Cup airs five days a week, Monday through Friday, 6.30 a.m. U.S. Eastern Time on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Twitch. I want to thank everybody for joining. I hope to see you back here tomorrow, and I hope you have a fantastic day. Take care, everyone. Peace.